Uh, good afternoon. As you know, uh, the government uh, bill to fund the government is coming up due uh, through the House and then through the Senate. Uh, I want to make sure that we have an opportunity to talk about the administration's priorities and how they were funded through that bill. So today there are, we're going to have uh, Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly talk about uh, what's in the bill to protect the country and keep our borders safe. Uh, ironically, when the uh, Secretary is done, he's got to get right to a meeting with the President to talk about the wall. Uh, and the efforts that he's making to drive down immigration, uh, legal border crossings. After he's done, Director of uh, Management and Budget Mick Mulvaney will come up, talk about the overall status of the President's priorities in the funding bill, and then, uh, and then take your questions. So without further ado, Secretary of Homeland Security, John Kelly. Well, I've talked to many in the media over the last hundred plus days about the things our department does on a daily basis to keep our nation safe. In the past 100 days, we've been incredibly successful in enforcing the law and defending the nation. I believe this budget will help us begin to improve the way we do business and how we accomplish our goals to make this country more secure. The department's base discretionary budget authority is $42.4 billion. While we can ne never, in my opinion, invest too much in the security of our citizens and in our communities, we will be able to both sustain our critical security operations and make improvements that will make us all safer. That includes hiring ICE agents, improving cybersecurity, funding grants that support state and local communities, and funding the Coast Guard operations at $344 million above the FY17 budget request. And as promised, the budget will secure our borders and enforce our immigration laws. Border security has three factors. 
You need people, you need technology, and you need infrastructure. This budget begins to provide, begins to provide all three. It will help us replace see-through steel wall along the southwest border. It will help us put more enforcement aircraft in the skies. It will help us to deploy more technology to stop illegal activity crossing our borders. It keeps us moving in the right direction to a more secure United States. We've accomplished so much with the resources we already have. If I may remind you, apprehensions of illegal immigrants and criminals at the border are down significantly. But we need more to keep moving forward. This is our government's largest investment in border security in 10 years. We are getting the tools we need, or beginning to get the tools we need, to make a change. But frankly, I am shocked at the behavior of some individuals in public service or public office that instead of celebrating how they've managed to reduce the, uh, the amount of money for our border wall, a wall that will make us more secure, that will prevent drug smuggling, they're rejoicing in the fact that that wall will be slower to be built and consequently our southwest border under less control than it could be. These appropriations provide a solid investment in the people, equipment and technology that helps our department protect the homeland. We face a variety of hazards with man-made and natural uh, factors, and this budget begins to help us confront them all. I would like to thank, as I always do, all of the men and women of DHS who take on this often thankless, often dangerous, and very, very difficult job, and they do it every day superbly. I am proud to lead them. Most Americans appreciate what they do and thank them every day. Most public officials also appreciate and defend them. But there are many who owe them an apology, many in public service who owe them an apology, and frankly, many in the media. But how they disrespect them, disrespect them for what they do, and how they serve us every day. And with that, I would like to introduce the Director of OMB. Next. All right, let's get the important things out of the way first. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, Sean said I can't do this, um, but today is my anniversary. So uh, my wife is actually watching this for a change. Hey, Pam, uh, I love you very much. It's my 19th anniversary. Good, we got that out of the way. Um, and believe me, I wish I were home and not here, but as much as I enjoy you people. Yeah, when you can't be home for your anniversary, you do it. Those of you who know me know that it's a miracle that I've been married to anybody for 19 years. So um, We're here today to talk about the bipartisan spending bill. Okay? Um, and I want to focus on that, on, on that description first before we go into the de details. A lot of folks have asked us over the course of the last 24, 48 hours, with Republicans in charge of the House and the Senate and the White House, why do we need a bipartisan spending bill? And one of the things I think is not being discussed uh, as openly as it should is that this is one of those bills that requires 60 votes in the Senate. So it's not like the health care bill. Uh, we have to have at least eight Democrats support this in the Senate, which is why we've been working with Democrats from the very beginning. Yes, we could have passed a Republican bill only out of the House, but it never would have passed out of the Senate, and then we would have been accused of not being able to function and run the government. So there's a very good reason that we've been working with Democrats on a bipartisan bill, and that is because we must. And until those rules change, that's the environment that we're going to continue to operate in. Um, uh, the, uh, the Dems have been trying to claim victory on this. Um, which I think is a very strange way to look at a bipartisan discussion. If you're in a bipartisan meeting, I think it's very unusual for one group to walk out and start spiking the football and say, hey, we won, we killed the other guys. And it certainly doesn't bode very well for future discussions. But since the Democrats have raised the issue and tried to cast this as Democrat victory, I think it's important today uh, and only fair to show you what's really in the bill and how the president actually cut a tremendous deal for the American people. At the end of the day, that's who we think won in this discussion, in this negotiation, not the Democrats, not the Republicans, but the American people. First, the list of things that Republicans got in the negotiation. You've heard a bunch of different numbers about the top line defense number. I've heard as low as 10 or 12 and a half billion dollars. The number is 21 billion. Okay? That is what the additional defense spending is, 21 billion dollars. That's made up of two numbers. Um, $15 billion in a standalone OCO, Overseas Contingency Operation Account, 
and another six billion that is hardwired into the underlying DOD appropriates bill. Remember, this is an omnibus bill, which means it's made up of different appropriations bills. One of those bills that becomes part of the omnibus is the defense uh, appropriations <coughs> bill, and in that bill is six billion dollars worth of OCO spending. So you take the six that's in the underlying bill the 15 that was added as the supplemental, and that's how you arrive at the $21 billion. The $12.5 billion number is wrong. The $15 billion number is wrong. You could talk about a number as high as $25 billion if you wanted to compare it to FY 2016, but you could never go below $21 billion in that, in, in that analysis, which is a full two-thirds uh, of what we'd asked for in the beginning. I'm going to talk a little bit more later on about the DHS number, the $1.522 billion of additional spending, by the way. That's not all of the spending on border security. The total DHS number by the time we're finished will be north of $42 billion. Okay? The, one of the largest, excuse me, the largest funding levels for border security in the last 10 years is what we'll have at the end of this process. That's where this negotiation has taken us to the largest spending on border security in 10 years. We'll go over the details of that in a second. Miners' health, one of my favorites. So the, the Democrats walked out of the room and said they protected the miners' health, okay? So did the president. The president is asking me since the day I got here for a way to fix the miners' uh, health, uh, health uh, issue problems that they have in Appalachia. And we were simply waiting for the opportunity to give it as part of a bipartisan discussion so that we could get something in return. We, we mark this as one of our victories uh, in this particular bill. Uh, every single Second Amendment protection that we wanted and the Democrats wanted to get rid of is still in the bill. Every single pro-life protection that we wanted to keep in the bill and the Democrats wanted out is gone. Okay? And most importantly, and those of you in this room and the folks who take the time to watch this during the day, um, understand this and follow this business fairly closely. We broke parity. Okay? And for those of you who have been covering this area for a long time, know what that means. It means in the past several years, ever since the spending caps came on, ever since the sequester went in, there was this unwritten deal on Capitol Hill, which is for every dollar of defense spending that the Republicans wanted, they had to give one dollar worth of non-defense spending to the Democrats. That was the deal that President Obama was able to cut during his last years in office. We got $21 billion of new defense spending for less than $5 billion of non-defense spending. Okay? We didn't go dollar for dollar. We got a dollar of spending and only gave 20 cents worth of non-defense discretionary. That's a tremendous development for this president and a huge win from a negotiating standpoint. Okay? Think about that for a second. We've gone from a dollar dollar to a, a dollar for just 20 cents. And plus, part of that four and a half, five billion dollars is stuff that we like. So the miners' health is included in that number. So even some of the stuff that we gave away, supposedly, to get the defense spending was stuff that we liked uh, in the first place. What didn't the Democrats get? There's no Obamacare bailout money in this package. I've read that in the newspapers a couple different times. I've seen it on the news. Go find it for me. It is not there. What the Democrats are telling you about that is false. There's absolutely no language in this bill that requires us to make any Obamacare bailout payments, any CSR payments of any way, shape, or form as, as a result of this deal. Okay. Why are the Democrats saying that? Because it's what they told their base they would deliver, and they failed to do that for their base. That is not in the bill. There's no new money for Puerto Rico. You hear the de Democrats uh, uh, crying out that they got $295 million for Puerto Rico. Not a penny of it is new money. Okay? All of that money was already spent. It was actually part of Obamacare uh, under a previous uh, agreement. That money was sitting there unspent. And all we agreed to do was agree to let them move it from one place to another. Did not t cost the taxpayer a penny. They wanted new money. They wanted a bailout. We wouldn't give it to them. We gave them money that was already uh, appropriate and already spent. No renewable energy uh, subsidies. They wanted, uh, re at the last minute, they threw in a demand for renewable energy subsidies for wind and solar uh, and other types of things. We kept those out. Um, what they really didn't get is this. And this is what they wanted. They wanted a shutdown. We know that. They were desperate to make this administration look like we couldn't function, like we couldn't govern. And we know that a large part of their base, especially their left-wing base, wanted a shutdown and certainly didn't want them to cut a deal with us. That's why I think you're seeing them crowing about their success, is in order to cover up the fact that they actually cut a deal with President Trump, and President Trump did a tremendous job. What are we talking about? More money for spending, excuse me, more money for defense, more money for border security, more money for school choice, another thing that we got, okay? 
Those of you who were here in March and saw me un, uh, uh, introduce our, our first version of our budget blueprint saw me talk about the President's priorities. What were they? Defense, border security, school choice. The President delivered on his promises and got his priorities funded, and that's what the Democrats don't want you to know. They want you to think they won. What they don't want you to know is the American people won here because the President simply out-negotiated them. I want to come back to one thing, then I'll take some questions. If I can bring the pictures up um, now, that would be great. Uh, you've heard me talk a lot over the course of the last couple of weeks. I've been on television a couple of times saying, oh, there's no bricks and mortar, there's no bricks and mortar, and there's no bricks and mortar for a wall in this. We can build this, okay? And we're going to build this. There are several hundreds of millions of dollars for us to replace cyclone fencing with 20-foot high steel wall. There's several hundreds of millions of dollars in the bill for us. To, can we bring up the other photo, please? Do we have the other photo? There's several hundreds of millions of dollars for us to build levee walls along the southern border. And as many of you know who follow this issue, some of the most vulnerable areas that we have are places along rivers where we desperately need levees in order to provide the, southern, the protection of the southern border that we, that we need. Okay? We are building this now. There is money in this deal to build several hundreds of millions of dollars of this to replace this. That's what we got in this deal, and that's what the Democrats don't want you to know. This stuff is going up now. Why? Because the President wants to make the country more safe. This doesn't stop drugs and doesn't stop criminals from crossing the border. In fact, it doesn't stop hardly anything from crossing the border. This does. And that's what we got in this deal, and that's why we're so excited about the opportunities that we have to follow through on the President's promises to secure the southern border. So unless we have the other, uh, the other uh, picture, I'll take a couple of questions. Border, how do you say that fence will keep drugs from coming over the border? They tunnel underneath the border. This is the border, uh, the, general, the general left. This is the wall, by the way, that DHS said they want. I've sat in the Oval Office of the President. We've talked about bricks and mortar. We've talked about concrete walls. This is what DHS wants. Why? Because it actually works better. You can tunnel under anything. Let me, I, I will answer your question, okay? You can see through this one. Okay? It's actually safer. Where we have this in place now, and we do, it's actually safer for our Border Patrol agents. There, I, there's, you can talk to the DHS about the details, but there's been a dramatic reduction in attacks on our Border Patrol agents where they can see through the wall because nobody's throwing anything over, this, over the top at them. This is what DHS wanted. It's also half of the cost, so we can build twice as much of it. This is a huge win for border security. Nick, uh, the President, uh, as you know, tweeted out this morning that looking ahead to fiscal year 18, a shutdown may be just the thing that's needed to clean up this budget mess. Do you, do you agree with him on that? Can you expand on that? Um, you know, I've, 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 I've been through a couple of shutdowns. Um, it's, uh, uh, let, let me answer that question this way. Um, that's a good discussion to have in September. I think the President is frustrated with the fact that he negotiated in good faith with the Democrats and they went out to try and spike the football and make him look bad. Uh, and I get that frustration because I think it's a terrible posture for the Democrats to take. If we're sitting here trying to prove to people that Washington is going to be different, that we're going to change things, we can actually figure out a way to work with them, uh, and they do that to this President, that, uh, listen, I would have taken offense at that. So it doesn't surprise me at all that his frustrations were manifested in that way. So, we've got a lot to do with, uh, we've got a lot to do between now and September. Um, I don't anticipate a shutdown in September. Um, but if negotiations, uh, if the Democrats aren't going to behave any better than they have in the last couple of days, it may be inevitable. You want to follow up on that? How would, it, how would a shutdown clean up the mess? Um, look, there's a, there's a lot. Sooner or later, we'll have to start doing something different, all right? I think I can make the argument, and I can, I think I just did, that we've made something dramatically different here today by getting rid of parity, by going that dollar to dollar and getting to something new, okay? That may help us change town a little bit. But if we get to September and it's still business as usual, business as usual, business as usual, nothing changes, and it takes a shutdown to change it, I have no problem with that. The gentleman in the back in the white in the red tie. Thank you, Mr. Director. And happy anniversary. Thank you very uh, much. I'm the, sure my uh, wife would really enjoys spending it this way. So. Okay. Um, a few weeks ago, Governor Graxas of uh, Mexico, who is chairman of their Governor's Association, said that the effort to get appropriations in the budget meant that the administration was giving up on having Mexico pay for the wall, as the President promised. Uh, and other uh, Mexican politicians have repeated what Governor Gracchus has said. What is your response to that? And, and I've, got, I've taken that question before, so I'll give you the same answer, which is, look, we had an opportunity to move quicker than we expected. 
okay? Because President Obama was not able to sign a full-term CR in October of last year, we actually got a bite at the 2017 apple. Think about that for a second. If President Obama had been able to pass a 12-month CR in October of 2016, we wouldn't even be here because all of this would have been dealt with and none of this would have been available, by the way. None of the additional spending for, for, for defense, the additional money for school choice, for the border, none of that would have been there because the President Obama would never would have signed that. We got an unexpected second bite at the 2017 apple, and we were happy to get it in order to start things moving quicker. I've said before, my job is to, is to spend the money. We're already working on ways to try and get Mexico to pay for it, but that's not my concern right now. I'm trying to get this thing built. Yes, sir. It, it, looks, like, uh, it looks like you have a wall there already. Um, this is the stuff that is actually built already. So this is an example that was the picture I was looking for. If anybody's watching this, is the picture of the levee wall. Um, this is what it looks like when it's currently built. And that was, I don't, we don't have the other picture up there anymore, of the, um, of the cyclone fencing. This will be replacing cyclone fencing. There's other pictures we have. Do you need a wall in all these places where you have existing fencing like this? Is that, is that a good way to spend? Uh, the government's money. Uh, I, I, I think securing the border is a good way to do it. There's certain places where technology will also help. We've got money for that in this. There's places where uh, we can start land acquisition now, for example, for next year. We can do that in this bill. Uh, we can start ramping up to hire new border agents. We got additional beds, by the way, at detention centers so that we can effectively end catch and release. One of the difficulties we had on catch and release was that the beds were full of the detention centers. So we've added those so those beds. So when you look at it holistically, it's a tremendous uh, improvement in, in border security. There'll be a wall across the entire U.S.-Mexico border. Now, as part of this bill, no. This is you've got a couple hundred million dollars uh, to do it. It's, this is this is a this is a several year process. You could not build all of that in one year. Yes, sir. Yesterday, uh, of this bill, you said, "quote I think it's great that the Democrats like the bill." We think it's a great deal for the administration as well. Yeah. So what changed? Yesterday it was great that they were pleased with it. And today it's it's an outrage. <coughs> it's spiking the football. I mean, what, what changed? How well, what I said yesterday is what you ordinarily say when you walk out of a negotiation, which is uh, we got some of what we want, they got some of what we want. We're either equally happy or equally unhappy, or we're a little bit more happy than they are because we got a bigger portion of government. And they're walking around trying to make it look like they pulled one over fast on the president. I just won't stand for it because it's not true. Be less happy. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd rather they be truthful. Go ahead. You were saying uh, earlier that, uh, that the Obamacare subsidies are not part of this bill. So Correct. does that mean that this administration is going to stop paying them? We've not made any decision. I think I've said that to you folks before. We've not made any decision. The payments are due, I believe, the 20th or the 21st of every single month. We've not made any decisions at all on May. Yes, sir. The follow-up to the earlier question is, what do you say to the members of your own party who say that this particular negotiation didn't net what they wanted? Some of them, I mean, Mike Huckabee, I think, even we did something out earlier. They're not happy with it. So what's your well, response? Well, keep in mind that until right now, I don't think anybody knew about this. Because what you heard us say is no bricks and mortar, no bricks and mortar is all about technology. We, about, we, the, about the deal itself. About Again, I, I, listen, I, I, I'd be happy to have this discussion with everybody and convince anybody on the right that this was a great deal. I well, talked with those on the right who are not happy with it. They've obviously seen it. My guess is they have not. My guess is they've been reading the Washington Post, they've been watching television, and heard, heard the Democrat side of the story, and I'm here today to let the other side in the middle. Yes, ma'am. Down, he could just veto the new spending bill. He doesn't have to wait until the fall. So why doesn't he just do that if he thinks a government shutdown is the best yeah, thing? I think we're giving it a chance to work. I think we're actually trying to, first of all, show that we can govern, and we can. We can do it effectively, and we have. And we can also fund our priorities, which this does. So I think, why, why would you shut it down when you've cut a fairly good deal for the American people and funded your priorities? I think what you heard this morning was his, his sense of frustration over how he's being mistreated by the Democrats on a bipartisan piece of legislation in the back standing up. Yes, sir. So, um, the president today in the tweet talked about a potential shutdown. You, you say Democrats wanted to do what they did so that they could force a shutdown. We've heard the term shutdown a lot here. Yeah. I think there's probably some folks at home who are saying, my gosh, we're barely 100 days into this. What does that mean for tax reform? What does that mean for an infrastructure bill? What does that mean for a government spending bill um, in September? And this is just year one. What, what does it say to the tone that we're already talking about? Well, I think the tone shutdown? is that they have a president who can run the place. Um, which is not a narrative that you hear coming out of many different sources right now. You have a president who is able to work with Democrats and Republicans. Again, a little disappointed at the way the Democrats have acted after the deal was put together. But you've got a president who knows what he's doing when it comes to running the country. There were a lot of people who were absolutely convinced 
including when he hired me to be the OMB director, that we were going to have a government shutdown. And I think the message that we're sending is that we are competent, we know what we're doing, and the country is safe in our hands, and think, we think this goes to prove that. Yes, sir. What just occurred, but you said the negotiations that just um, uh, Mr. Chair, I want to follow up on that, um, Donald's question. I'm a, I'm a little confused. You said that the Democrats wanted a shutdown. Yeah, I really believe and that. And it's the President himself that tweeted, our country needs a good shutdown in September. Can you explain that? And if there is a shutdown in September, won't it clearly be the president's fault? I mean, he's the one actually calling Again, for it. It's, it's 18, or it's, the 18 budget comes up in September. Between now and then, you've got tax reform to deal with. You hope to have infrastructure to deal with. You have the debt ceiling to deal with. So there's a lot of things to deal with between now and September. And again, what I think you heard the president expressed this morning was frustration over how he's been treated as part of the negotiation. And it may be, if things don't get better, that we get to that point. But I think there's a lot of things that will happen between now and then to let us know if we're moving in the right direction. To your first point about the Democrats, um, I think it was a little bit reported that um, there was a great deal of, of, uh, of uh, disagreement within the House Democrats over this deal. Um, that Mrs. Pelosi was absolutely convinced when we said that we wanted money for the wall that we would shut the government down. And when we took that request off of the table early in these negotiations, they were flabbergasted. And they were stuck in a circumstance where they were facing possibly shutting the government down, and some of them wanted to do that. Uh, my guess is their base is not going to be very happy to know that we are building this, okay? We are taking their taxpayer money to build this. Right? That's the deal that we cut, and my guess is that's not going to sell very well with some folks on the left, but they're going to have to deal with that. Yes, ma'am. Sir, you spoke about this being a bipartisan bill because it needs to be. The President seems to also be floating this idea of doing away with the legislative filibuster. Is that a good idea? I mean, is that something you're actually talking about, and is that what you need to well, clearly we don't need it because we did this. The question is, would it, would it be easier? Would the results be even better? Uh, would there be less sort of animosity? Maybe. Um, I, I know that there has been some discussion on the Hill over the course of the last couple of years for uh, limiting the filibuster when it comes to appropriations bills. Keep in mind, one of the reasons we're here and one of the reasons we have a discussion, it seems, every couple of months now about a shutdown is the appropriations process is broken. And the way it used to work and it's supposed to work of the House passing an appropriations bill on a topic say mil, uh, mil, military construction and VA, the Senate passing a bill on the same thing, then going to conference committee, then putting that bill on the desk for the president. That I don't think has functioned in the last decade. I've been here since 2011 and it's never worked. Change we want to go back to that process. But the reason we can't get back to that process is because the Senate is requiring 60 votes on every single appropriations bill. And that is forcing this discussion about continuing resolutions, which are a bad way to run the government. And they force a discussion about shutdowns, which are simply not productive. What does the president say, Dr. Mulvaney, thanks for being here today. What does the president, uh, how does the president define a good shutdown? Well, I don't know. It's, it, you know, we haven't had one. Um, I think a good shutdown, if there is such a thing, again, a shutdown is not, and I've said this before to you folks, I said it during my confirmation, it's not a goal, okay, and it's not a negotiating tool. The president advocated but for one. But to the extent the president advocated for one today, if you, if you wanted to imagine what a good shutdown was, it would be one that fixes this town. So what would the that president one that drives the message back home to people that it really was as broken as they thought that it was when they voted for, for Donald Trump, and they would trust him. To, that's what it's necessary to do. To fix Washington D.C., that would be a good so shutdown. Yes, just to be clear, in the last in the last shutdown, 800,000 federal employees were indefinitely furloughed. Another 1.3 million were required to work without knowing when they would get paid. Right. So, is that a good shutdown that fixes Washington? Come back to your point. We, we, you and I have had these discussions before because I've been through a shutdown before. Every single one of those folks got paid. Right. Everybody always has during the temporary lapses in appropriation, which is what the Congressional Research Service calls them. It is a lot of uncertainty, and it's certain. And that's why I say it's not desirable. But you asked me what a good one would look like, and a good one would be something that fixes Washington D.C. permanently. Yes, sir. Um, we heard a few weeks ago from appropriators that you walked into a meeting and were very uh, front-footed about defunding and cutting funding for sanctuary cities. What happened between that meeting yeah. and now? Um, that meeting took place in early March. I've also heard that we came late to the game. I got, I got um, put in this office, I think, February 17th. Um, and the first week in March, we were meeting with appropriators on the Hill to lay out the President's priorities, uh, which, again, they were at that time. The four that we laid out for them was we wanted defense increases, we wanted border security, including the wall, we wanted targeted reductions in spending, and we wanted sanctuary cities. We had to give up on those last two as part of a negotiation, because that's what you do in a negotiation. We got, uh, as part of that negotiation, something we didn't ask for in the first place. Uh, it wasn't on our first list, but something that is still important to the President, which is the school choice. So that is the nature of a back and forth in a negotiation. And again, for the reasons I laid out here today, I think we got a tremendous deal. In the middle, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Director. 
Director, um, you said in your statement before you started taking questions that the President delivered on his promises and got his priorities funded. Yeah. Well, that's not true. You didn't get the border wall, no funding for the border wall. That's a replacement, no funding for a new wall on the U.S. southern border. Uh, Planned Parenthood. Let me ask you a question. Let me finish. I'll let you finish, but let me ask you a question. You're yeah. asking a series of questions. I'll stop right there. When you heard about the deal yesterday, when you heard i will be happy to let you go if you let me answer your question. I, I won't jump to another person. I promise you've seen me do this a couple times before. You said, My question, well, then you no, can take it as a whole, right? Fine. Okay, go thank ahead. you very much. So Are they always like this? As, as <laughs> far, so, as far as the priorities that you say are funded, the border wall, no new border wall along the U.S. southern border. Planned Parenthood was not defunded. You've already said that another priority of the president uh, was not carried through, and that's the sanctuary cities problem. So explain to me how you um, say what you said before and square what you said before with the actual reality as far as the budget is concerned. Sure, and I'll thank say it. thank you. Thank you for finishing your question. Let me ask you a question. Okay, when you heard in the last forty-eight hours about the deal, did you think we could build this? I bet you didn't. Nobody did. Okay, is it a replacement for existing wall? Yeah, that's fine. Is it new wall? No. This is what's out there right now. Okay. And this is what's going to be put in as a result of this bill, okay? That is better border security. You can call it new wall, you can call it replacement, you can call it maintenance, call it whatever you want to. The president's priority was to secure the southern border, and that's what this does. No, he asked a couple questions. I, I, I'm going to the, the young woman in the pink then, and then the uh, young woman in the orange, um, and then we'll take another couple. But let me finish your thing. Just <laughs> Planned Parenthood, okay? Planned Parenthood. Um, we had a good discussion, but it's a fair question. We had a really good discussion about that. Okay, and what we decided after talking to some of our most pro-life supporters on the Hill and the pro-life supporters outside was that this president's already made his case fairly strongly for his pro-life position. You saw us sign the CRA. You saw Mike Pence, Vice President Pence, have to, sign, have to break the tie uh, on that vote, okay, um, on, on, on Planned Parenthood, on the, uh, the states with the Medicaid funding. Um, you've seen the executive orders. You've seen the stuff. Oh, this bill includes all of the traditional uh, protections for the pro-life movement, including the Hyde Amendment. Um, and what we simply decided was, look, if you want to take a vote on the Hill to stake out your position on Planned Parenthood, do it on the health care bill. And the outside groups agreed with us on that. The pro-life movement agreed with that. If you want to prove to the folks back home that you are, are pro-life, then vote for the Planned Parenthood bill. The last thing you asked about sanctuary cities, I already talked about that, and that was something we gave up in the negotiation. But at the end of the day, here's how I look you in the face and the folks on the camera and the folks back home would say the president got his priorities funded. More money for the military, more money for southern, uh, the southern border security, and more money for school choice. Those are the same exact priorities that I talked about in March when we laid out the, the budget. So that's how I could look you in the eye and tell you that I'm absolutely satisfied we funded our priorities. No, I look like that border wall right there, the new border wall that you built. Will it look like that one right well, there? Well, this is what's this is what's permitted in the bill. So that was so I'm saying, will the new one that's built along the U.S. southern border look like that border wall right there? Well, I mean, we've got a border that's in certain places. Yes, I mean, the, the, the other photo we can't get up is the levees. So I'm not really sure what your question is. So question we will build is the most to appropriate replace that wall with a new wall with new funding. In other words, this is a short-term fix. And then we're going to have the U.S. government. That is a 20-foot high steel wall. That is not a temporary short-term fix. So I'll, 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 I'll finish you. Now, I'll go to, I've been promising the young lady in the pink in the back a question for a second. I don't, and the young lady in the orange. I'll follow up on okay. that. Where is that being built, and how many miles are you going to get out of it? Oh, I don't know where it's being built. Um, and again, we haven't done the mile the per mile. I think the total spending is three hundred and forty seven million dollars on that. Um, but I, we haven't done the math yet on what that does. What does that cover what are we talking about? Well, again, it depends on it's more expensive to build a wall in certain places. So we, this is going to be replacement. So we have to go out and figure out where we are. And that's really, it's cheaper than building new wall because we already have land acquisition here. We have the rights to build it, et cetera. There's probably roads out there to service it. When you're building new wall, to the gentleman's point, you're starting from scratch. So you have to build the infrastructure necessary just to get the construction teams out there to build. Uh, so we haven't done the math yet on how many miles we can build and where it will be. What we do know is that we have several hundred of million dollar, hundreds of millions of dollars to do this. Do you have a follow-up on that or not? Well, yes. I mean, when can we see construction? When do you think you're going to go out there and put up a wall? Uh, this construction that you see here, well, I don't know if it's this exact construction because I don't know where this photograph is. This wall is being installed on the southern border today. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, Director Mulvaney. Um, uh, so, two topics, uh, several questions. Now, when it comes to the wall and this, this budget for the wall, um, it's very expensive. That's one piece of the immigration issue. Mm -hmm. What about the larger piece of the immigration issue? 
where's the funding when it comes to fixing the issue where you have people who are overstaying their visas? That's more of an immigration issue that um, in the past and even now that's happening versus just dealing with the southern border. You have immigrants from all countries coming here versus just the southern border. How are you going to, what, what monies are going into yeah, that piece? It, it, it's a fair question. Let me answer this two ways. It's probably not going to be very satisfactory, but this is how I'd answer your question. First of all, this is a, this is a pure funding bill. Yes, there are certain policies that are wrapped up into it, but I think both parties would probably push back if you tried to tie something as large as immigration reform to a funding bill. We, they don't like to do that. They will tell you that they're not supposed to authorize on an appropriations bill. This is a one-year funding bill. It is not supposed to be a carrier for a long-term policy change. Now, they obviously, from time to time, they make exceptions to that, but they really don't like to do that on the Hill. I didn't like to do it uh, when I was a member of Congress. So that's a technical answer to your question. But to your larger discussion about why do this and, and ignore the other, the other topics is that I really don't think, and I, this is not just rhetoric, I really believe this, and I've, I've been through this as a member of Congress, it's very difficult to have a conversation about immigration until the southern border is secured. Because all of us who follow it very closely, many of you in this room, know the example of Ronald Reagan from the 1980s when he did the amnesty in exchange for the, for the Southern Wall, gave the amnesty first, and never got the wall. And there's a lot of folks, myself included, who say, fool me once, you know, shame, shame on you. Um, and until we secure the Southern border, we don't think it's productive to have a larger conversation about immigration. No, I'm not finished. The I know. Conversation. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry. They, they were the ones trying to interrupt you. Oh, but they're not. <laughs> um, the, conversation, the conversation has been basically focus just on the southern wall and, and the other piece is just not there in the conversation from the White House. No one is dealing with the bigger issue. The main that's the major piece versus this expensive wall. And that's why I'm wondering why is there not talk about that and the money to accompany the bigger piece on the immigration issue. I'll answer, I'll answer the same way but a different way. I think that the administration needs to have credibility on this before we start talking about immigration with anybody. No one will take us seriously on immigration reform until we've satisfied them that we have secured the southern border. There are folks in my own party who say, look, I want to talk about immigration reform, but you have to go out and secure the southern border first. And I think that's what we're doing. I'll take one or two more. Wait, 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 sir, sir, I wanted to go ACA, sir. I wanted to go on I said several topics when I asked. ACA, sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to get it when I can get it. Um, on ACA, is it, sir, on ACA, is it more about the numbers or about the issue when it comes to these possible waivers for states, when it comes to the issues of substance abuse, taking the substance abuse component out of the ACA, that I'm asking that question okay. as many of these candidates to include this current president who ran on the issue of fixing the opioid addiction, the heroin addiction. Now you have this piece that possibly that states can take the substance abuse uh, uh, prevention or, or, or programs out of ACA. What are the numbers on that? Because how do you justify that when these candidates, these Republican candidates and Democrats, ran on this? Yeah, I, I don't know what numbers you're speaking of, but I, too, I will. I will speak. I, I will. I will speak to the, the philosophy, numbers? which is that we really do believe that the states will do it better than we will. Um, I mean, you've seen this commitment that the administration has already had to opioid abuse. I think there may be money for it in, in, this, in this funding bill um, that we approve of, okay? So we're committed to that, but I also think we recognize the reality that the states are probably more nimble uh, and more well attuned to their own local populations to deal with it. I was in the state legislature in South Carolina. I would have loved on very many different levels, from opioid abuse to Medicaid, to simply have the federal government write us a check and say, here, South Carolina, go fix, go help these folks that we want you to help, because we would have done a better job at it. So while I don't have numbers for you, that's the philosophy behind all of these waivers, is that the federal one-size-fits-all might not be the best solution, and let's let the states solve the problem. You had a question. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks very much. Back on the issue of shutdowns, you mentioned earlier that President Trump was upset by how the Democrats portrayed the deal. Yeah. Is it right to shut down the government because of how something was portrayed instead of what was oh, actually Which is why we're not deal. shutting it. I mean, if that was the case, we'd be vetoing this bill now. But isn't I, that what he's foreshadowing? No, I think what he's foreshadowing is, look, this place has to change. The way we run the town has to, to be fixed. We have to do something. We cannot simply muddle along using the same models that previous, the previous administration has used. Okay? Something, this is a change agent president, and he's going to change Washington, D.C., and if it takes a shutdown, then that's what it takes. But again, that's, that's several months away from that discussion. We have a lot to do between now and then. Yes, sir. Quick follow-up on this notion of a, of a good shutdown. <laughs> Wouldn't most Americans agree that shutdowns are bad? You shouldn't shut yeah. down the government? And, and, and further to that point, 
uh, it seems as if you, you may have answered your own question this week on, on the question of government shutdown. You have a compromise. Republicans mm -hmm. and Democrats are getting together and passing something. Both sides are not getting everything that they want. Isn't that what the American people want? They want their government to work and pass budgets that, that can be a compromise and both sides can agree on? How, how, can, a, how can a shutdown be good? That's, that's exactly what I think they want, and that's exactly what we have given to them with this agreement. My point to you in response to a couple different questions was that the president wants to see Washington better, get better, get fixed, change the way it does business. Um, this and week that you had a compromise? It is. It absolutely is, which is why it's so frustrating, which is why it's so frustrating to have the Democrats go out and say they won and we lost. That's not, that's not a bipartisan way to approach things. I can't imagine uh, Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill having that discussion, you know, at the end of a negotiation. Sorry, as always, do you actually, last question. Uh, yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask you about Republicans. I know that you're talking about on the Senate side, you need Democrats and stuff. Yeah. So, on the House side, there have been budget bills that simply can't get enough Republican support mm -hmm. to pass on their own. Do you think that that it is possible to do a Republican budget bill with Republican votes alone? I do, because I voted for them myself. There's actually been a lot more, uh, like an actual many more bill? appropriations bills that have passed with just Republican support than people realize. The reason you don't hear about them is that they die because the Senate is, is incapable of, of passing a bill or passing a bill that has any chance of passing in the House because they have to use the 60-vote threshold, uh, which is where I started the conversation. So, no, I think you're selling the Republicans short. You're selling Republicans leadership and the rank-and-file membership. You let them speak their mind. Let them hear, let their voices be heard in the next appropriations process, which, by the way, starts today. And I'll close with this. This puts 17 to an end, okay? But the discussion about the 18 funding begins right now, and we very much want to see the ordinary appropriations process function. And anything we can do at the White House to encourage that to happen, we will do it. Um, and we, because we do not want to be here again. We don't want to be having a discussion about a shutdown. It, look, one of the things you asked about, about changing Washington, about why would you have a discussion of shutdown in, in September? If the appropriations process is still not working by September, that's a bad thing for the country. It's a bad thing for the Congress, by the way. The, 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 one of the things that we like, okay, as members of the government, I'm not talking about members of the administration now, just members of the government, is that the, the, fun, the proper functioning of the appropriations process is critical to the proper constitutional function of the government. The House and the Senate are supposed to use the power of the purse, and when they don't do appropriations bills, their constituents' voices, who are also our constituents' voices, are not heard. So we hope very much that, that comes back uh, into uh, as part of the process. Uh, we're very pleased with the deal today. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, you can always call Mr. Zartaki. Thank you very much again, and thank you for letting me have a shout-out to my wife. Will you guys just email where that wall is from exactly so we can identify location? Appreciate it. Sean, Thanks so much. Sean, 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 <laughs> ah, Sean just <laughs> they got owned. That's fu that's hilarious. Oh man, <laughs> the mainstream media got trolled. Oh, I love Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer is awesome. Thank you very much, folks, for joining us and choosing us as your stream of choice. If you, Mick Mulvaney is awesome. Um, I think he was born to do macro financing. The guy is amazing at what he does. He knows finance in and out. He knows how to deal with the budget. And I think it was a very great pick for the president to choose him as um, as a budget secretary. So yeah, folks, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I hope that you guys stay here with us at Golden State Times. If you're new, subscribe. We stream everything that has to do with administration, uh, live streams of events like yesterday, the May Day uh, protest that was going on in LA, we streamed that. So we also stream Trump rallies and we upload breaking news videos and news videos to keep you guys up to date about what's going on. I hope that you guys join us and I hope that you guys stay tuned. We'll be uploading a whole bunch of videos today, at least six of them. 
There's a lot of news coming out. And as you guys heard, there's going to be funding for the continued construction of the existing border wall. Um, so there's a lot of areas in here in California that are not closed off and mo you know, along the Imperial Valley, along San Diego County. So those pieces of it that are still missing are going to be built as of today, like you said. So yeah, folks, stay tuned and we'll bring you guys more information. But until next time, my name is Gent. I'm from Golden State Times and I'll see you soon. Peace.